Hey guys, I'm Shannon Cook and I am here right now with Brave New Hollywood. We're having a, a chat about um, all sorts of stuff and things that I don't uh, share with people every day. So happy to have you here and uh, thanks for joining us. You're here for Dark Places. Let's, let's talk about that film. Mm -hmm. uh, how'd you get that role? I just, you know, found out about the audition and, and taped. I didn't really expect anything to follow through, but uh, then there was some interest in retapes and then meeting with the director over Skype and, uh, you know, holding my breath for like over six weeks. I was, you know, I was in, they were saying yeses, but we had to, it took a long time to, to, to for, the, for the role to follow through. So having Charlie Theron, a fellow South African, was no connection. <laughs> no, and I still haven't even met her. I'm so sad about that. I mean, she's sort of popped into my sphere multiple times. When I first moved to Canada, I saw her at the premiere for Monster because I won tickets and I'd never won anything. And she was a meter away from me. And I opened my mouth to say hello and I choked up and I didn't say hi. I was like the first celebrity I'd seen. Um, and I'd looked up to her from South Africa all my life because she was the only actor outside who was saying that South Africans, we could take our work outside of the country. Um, so then I, I wrote in my journal that I let fear overtake me in the moment and I need to learn from that and I was sort of upset with myself. And, uh, I, but I wrote that I'd see her again because I was quite sure that I'd meet her again one day. And then the, the, the role happened and I got to set really excited to meet her and they told me she left the day before I arrived because we shot it in present day and the 80s because my character's in the 80s. So I was disappointed about that and then I came here to the premiere and was confident I'd see her, missed her at the, the red carpet, saw the movie, and then she was really sick, so she couldn't make it to the after party, wow. and I missed her again, and I was like, man, that sucks. But, you know, I'll meet her again one day some other time. Maybe it means something, well, you know, <laughs> maybe this bigger thing is about to happen. Yeah. Whatever, yeah, yeah. Whatever. So who are your scenes uh, against in the film? Chloe Moritz uh, and Ty Sheridan, like, all the time, so they're my main scene partners. Um, and they were lovely to work with, uh, just really cool people, gracious and talented. And um, yeah, I, I sent them a video the day afterwards because uh, Ty's shooting Young Cyclops in X-Men and Chloe's shooting another movie that Charlie's is producing in Vancouver. So I just sent them both a video letting them know about the premiere and that I missed them there. And they wrote back and we're all still in touch. It's funny, when you do movies with people, it's sort of like, for me, I feel like I'm forever connected to them. It's some sort of like its own family. You may not ever see them again in your life, but there's, some, there's, a, there's a strange bond that I find um, with people that I've worked with. So you hang on, hang on to that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, let's talk about, um, about your role, okay? Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about the character you play? Um, my character, Trey Tapano, he's a mixed uh, native youth in, in Kansas in the 80s. Um, his reputation in society there is sort of as a, a guy who, you know, mutilates cattle and worships the devil. He's angry and, uh, you know, he's, he's young. He works out to death metal all day pumping iron and he's a bookie. He, he, you know, deals with drugs and things and is just sort of passionately finding his way through things but, you know, channeling himself in not the best way. Uh, Gillian Flynn wrote that story. It's, it's, uh, I think she used the thriller as an engine to talk about family. Because at the end of the day, the book is really, uh, it's, a, it's a heartfelt testament about uh, the bond and family and what we do for each other. You also went through your own, I guess, regimen, the way of tapping into the character you're going to play. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, I researched the culture a bit. Um, uh, but I have so much of a well of my own experience as a mixed person and experiencing my own racial, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. There's been, I've had my own stories coming from South Africa and realizations that have dropped in after the fact. And uh, I just had to, I brought a lot of my own uh, feelings towards that. Um, but then, you know, there was points in, in it that I was actu actually channeling ancestors through my, through, through my spirit, just trying to bring in their story. And how much of that's going to come across the screen? You know, you have a few lines and the story's not about me, it's really about the story. So you just try to bring as much of a presence as you can. Um, and I was working out a lot, and sometimes I was like, am I working out more than I'm mining the character? Um, but I really detached myself from society and my friends, and it was quite tough. A lot of friends got upset with me because I was sort of unavailable, but I just really had to stay focused. And when you're in a dark sort of mindset, you don't really want to be chit-chatting with people and, and smiling and, you know, um, but you know, other people, they just, they're very easy and they flip in and out of a role. It can be pretty taxing. So um, it's just, uh, in, in this case, I decided to do it that way, but it may not be how I decide to do roles coming up in the, in the future. What, what do you do between film projects and 
uh, you know, I guess if you're free time, what do you do to detach, to relax? Yeah, I think it's really important for actors not to just be about acting. Some actors, they just go to class all the time and they don't live, they don't learn anything, they don't go to classes outside of the, the, the realm of acting and everything is about getting that role and it's not healthy. You can't just be about that. There's so much in the world going on that will inform you as an actor. So, you know, I'd really like to travel a lot more. I haven't done that enough, but you know, I try to go to classes. I have taken classes in like Reiki, astrology, you know, I've, I do different martial arts, dance classes, you know, try, try to learn an instrument, languages. There's, you know, lots of things to, different sorts of people out there and cultures to, to grow from. So it's really important to, to not just be in an acting class and learning how to act and actually learning how to live. Yeah, what, what is important to you? Are there like uh, things just top of your head that you give importance to in life? Uh, I mean, family and, you know, I just trying to stay in my center and, and, and find what, what keeps me happy and fulfilled. But then also to remember that it's not just about myself. And it's tough. You live alone and you're, you're pursuing your career and you don't want to go to that person's birthday or to that event because you're like, well, I should be working on this for myself. So, you know, it's a, it's a push and pull relationship. But um, at the end of the day, it's just how, what, um, you know, what keeps me happy. And, uh, you, you know, you may be fooled into thinking that certain things make you happy because of the way media talks to you. You know, the adverts forget this. And, you know, if you buy that, you'll feel better or more fulfilled. And, um, that's a self-discovery as to what really fulfills you. Um, and I think we're all, you know, trying to figure that out.